<laughs> All right, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of Ask the Doctor. Where am I, you might ask? Nate, you're not sitting in your office, surrounded by people, doing busy things, and looking very important. That's right. I'm sitting in a hotel room in Anchorage, Alaska. Yeehaw. Alaska is awesome, by the way. Um, once I retire from Bright Agri Tech, you can expect that I will be living here. So, if you want to get a hold of me, come to Alaska. All right, today, super duper exciting, we're going to talk about RO filters. And um, let's see here. We're talking about RO filters, and let's just jump right into these questions um, and get this done. So the first question is um, regarding RO filters. My plumbing is always getting up, gunked up with fish poop, and my friends told me that I should get an RO filter to stop the clogging. But then I saw a forum on a forum that RO filters are only for molecules. What the dot 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 question mark? What am I supposed to do? This is from John. Okay, so John, um, <clears throat> RO filters are not supposed to be put in your system. So you do not want to be filtering the water in your system with an RO filter. It will clog up really fast. RO filters are essentially uh, filtering water down to the molecular level, which means that they're really made for really super fine things and for removing things like carbonates from your water, removing things like chloramines from your water. Um, these are the things that it removes from water, tiny, minuscule, little individual molecules. It will not remove, well, it will remove fish poop really well, but it will clog up really, really quickly. So when, we, when I talk about putting an RO filter in your system, what I'm really talking about is putting an RO filter um, in to filter the water coming, your top off water, right? So the water that you put into your system to raise the levels, that's what you're, that's what you're using. If you're trying to remove really heavy solids or large solids within your system, then there's you know, cyclone and swirl filters, there's bead filters, there's settlement tanks, there's trickling filters, there's all sorts of other options out there that will work 100 times better um, for filtering solids. What we're actually trying to do is remove carbonates and remove um, other things in your water that might be troublesome, salts, that kind of thing. So that's what RO filters do. They'll remove salts, they'll remove carbonates, they'll remove other things in your water that you really just don't want there. So. That's what that's for. Um, the second one here is, can I just go on eBay and choose an RO filter, or is there a certain kind that I need? This is from James. Um, you can go on eBay, and you can kind of just choose whatever RO filter is going to meet the number of gallons per day that you need to top your system off with. Um, but it's worth doing a little research. There are some good ones, and there are some bad ones, and there are a lot of companies these days selling RO filters. Um, so the big things to know are how much water is wasted when you run it because if you get like one gallon of perfectly pure water, some filters will waste as much as three gallons to get that one gallon. Now that water is not completely uh, worthless. You can use it for irrigation. You can use it for lots of other things. But um, it's, it's important to be thinking about and making sure that you're using an RO filter that's going to waste a minimal amount of water. <clears throat> Um, also look into the cost of the filters because those can be very expensive as well. Mm -hmm. And make sure that you have enough pressure in your water supply to meet the needs of that pump. So um, I would recommend looking at that very carefully because a lot of people don't have enough pressure to actually run the RO filter and you'll have to put in a booster pump. Some of the nicer systems will actually have a bo booster pump in the system itself. This is just a pump that takes the water and raises its pressure going into your RO filter to make sure you've got enough pressure to get the work done because it is actually uh, amazing how fine these things are filtering uh, the water and it takes a lot of pressure to really filter water at that uh, fine of a level. So the next question, um, it, I should say you can get them on eBay, um, you can get them on Hydro Farm, you can get them on a lot of different websites for hydroponic growers, um, you know, Amazon, they all sell these things. Just check on the specs and make sure you're getting the right system for you. That is, get one that has an adequate number of gallons per day, get one that wastes minimal amounts of water, and get one that will operate at the pressure as you plan to operate at. Okay, I know that my water is too hard and want an RO filter, but don't know how to hook it up. Do I need a plumber to do it? If not, where should I put it? Uh, this is from Fiona. That's F-I-O-N, capital A-H, with pronounce it right, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. All right, Fiona. I think it's Fiona. Fiona. Fiona can't be Fiona. It has to be Fiona. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Elsa's no help. Um, so uh, let's see here. Yeah, so with RO filters, um, 
most of the time you can put them in their cells in yourself. Most of these things are made for like home home fo uh, folks doing this at home. And uh, what they do is they take the, uh, the filtration system and they uh, will basically uh, put it in themselves. You don't necessarily need a plumber. It depends on the system though. Some systems are a little bit more complicated and may require a plumber. Mm -hmm. um, and I will tell you that I'm pretty comfortable with plumbing so I tend to over estimate how easy it will be for other folks to put in systems like this. So, um, you know, maybe check the system. A lot of the times they'll have manuals that kind of tell you what to do and um, tell you whether or not you're going to need a plumber to get it all working. So, um, installation can be easy, can be hard, totally depends on the system. If you're used to plumbing, if you've done plumbing before, it's probably not a big deal. So the next question is, can I use, oh dang it, my computer just froze up on me. Okay, um, the next one is, can I just, oh, excuse me, good night. This is, the, this is candid, ask the doctor. I mean, they're all pretty candid, I guess, but this one's especially candid. You guys are getting the real deal today. Um, can I just use a Brita filter instead? This is from Carmen. Um, Carmen, no, you can't. I mean, a Brita filter can do some things, and actually, I'm not familiar. I mean, some of the Brita filters, I don't think, they're not, they're not RO filters, definitely. I'm not sure how fine they are, and I'm not sure what they remove. Um, so some of them might be okay, but most of them probably not. Um, can you make your own RO filter? This is from Daniel. Yes, Daniel, if you have at your disposal some incredible technology, you could make your own, own RO filter, but it would be really tough. And I just recommend instead that you just go buy one. They're so cheap these days. A couple hundred bucks will get you into a really good RO filter. And that way you don't have to, you know, design these huge industrial machines to do this for you. Someone else has already done the hard work. Now you just got to go drop a couple hundred bucks on it and plug the sucker in. So, um... That's pretty much it for our O filters. They're really, really great tools, and I highly recommend that you use them, especially if you have hard water. So if you have hard water, put in our O filter. Save yourself months and months and months of pain. Um, again, you know, our O filters are the most useful for hard water. So if you're really trying to reduce um, the hardness of your water, if you're trying to get ahead of carbonates in your system, which buffer your pH up much higher than you typically want it, then an RO filter is the way to go. It lets you start from scratch with super pure water. So um, it's great stuff. You, you don't use it in the system. You use it on source water or top off water. You can get them almost anywhere and there are a lot of different varieties out there these days. I recommend getting them from a more reputable site. You know, we, we use like a hydro, hydro farms for a lot of things. Um, I know that my water is too hard, um, but I don't know how to hook it up you can usually put these things in your cells. No problems. Um, Brita filter probably won't work. I just don't know enough about them to tell you. Um, and can you make your RO filter? Practically, no. Um, but if you really want a science product project that will take you 10 years to probably produce something that you can use in your system, go for it. <laughs> um, so that looks like it's that's it for today. Um, next week, the, thing is, the theme is um, things to consider when growing indoors. So growing indoors is super, super interesting and gives you a lot more control, but it also means that you have to make a lot more decisions that you couldn't make when you're just growing outdoors or growing in a greenhouse. So tune in next week. Send us your queries. Use the form below to send us your questions, and we will answer them as best we can. Um, yeah, we'll look forward to that. Thanks for tuning in.